This GPU is the cheapest graphics card you could buy that supports ray tracing. And today, I'm gonna torture it by throwing down a ray tracing gauntlet with the goal of making it melt. Hello there, I'm Techweeb. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video. I got a comment recently on my recent T400 emulation video, and it actually got a bunch of upvotes right away. It was this comment. Oh, yeah, you, you want me to read it for you? Seriously? Oh, uh, okay. Nadia as our uh, Howdy asks, Can you try the RX 6400 on Cyberpunk 2077 at psycho setting and ray tracing at reflection at all the 720p resolution using the first 2.0 or 2.1 modded? Please do it. Alright, fine then. I will. Now, for those that don't know, the RX 6400 is one of the cheapest GPUs that you can buy. It's the best cheap GPU that you can buy, in my opinion, like I said in my video review, which I'll link below. And it has some shortcomings, I'll be the first to admit that. But it also has some of the best bang for the buck performance of all the lower end budget GPUs. This GPU is 160 bucks, and for that price, you get to play like everything. There's no game you can't play, albeit at lower settings, but for the most part, even on brand new modern games, you'll be able to go with 1080p and medium settings. For, for 160 bucks, that's pretty great in my opinion. And it has a trick up its sleeve. This GPU has hardware ray tracing support. Not much to be fair, it has like 12 RT cores. It's the lowest spec, cheapest GPU that actually supports ray tracing. So. Hey, if you want ray tracing for whatever reason, and if you want to spend the least amount possible, well, this is what you'd want to get. I personally don't bother with ray tracing. I made a whole video about how I think ray tracing is kind of pointless. There's a link in the description below. But I acknowledge that some people do like ray tracing. As for this RX 6400, I don't think anyone will expect it to do an amazing job or anything. Or even a good job, honestly. I mean, it's like 160 bucks. Like, what do you expect? Now, I don't know why someone would want to punish the RX 6400 in such a way as this. Cyberpunk maxed out with Psycho Ray Chasing. Uh, to be fair, he did say at 720p with FSR upscaling, so that, that should, this should be a best case scenario. I'm actually intrigued by the concept. I intrigued enough to make this video. So we're gonna test it out. But I actually wanted to make a video covering ray tracing on the RX 6400 anyways. So let's not jump into the deep end just yet. Let's give it a fair chance. And we'll test out a few easier to run games first and <laughs> save Cyberpunk for last. If only because there's a chance that this GPU will explode when we unleash Cyberpunk's psycho ray tracing on it. And after that, I won't be able to test out any other games because I'll be dead. I'm doing my testing today in my main rig with a Ryzen 7 5800X, 48 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM running at 3600 megahertz and a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. And the RX 6400, obviously. Uh, full specs listed in the description below. Starting off, as you could, could have probably have guessed, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I always test this game first because it's one of my favorite games. It's very well optimized, so it runs b very well on a wide variety of hardware. It looks freaking amazing, and Laura Croft is my girlfriend, and I'm gonna marry her someday. This game also has a ton of graphics options, and you can apply them live right in the game without needing to restart or anything like that. So let's start off easy and go with 1080p medium settings with no ray tracing, just to see how it does as a baseline. And, well, it does amazing. 57 FPS? That's more than playable. That's really good. Especially considering that this isn't a low-end game or anything. This game ran at like 30 FPS on the console, so getting you know, almost 60 FPS on a $160 GPU is uh, some really solid value, in my opinion. But we're not here to gush about the performance of this GPU, we're here to punish it. So let's turn on ray tracing right up to high. And, well, it's gone down a lot. Toggling that ray tracing drops us down to 18 FPS, which is not really playable as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, for games like this, third person exploration games that I play with a controller, I could possibly get away with a sub 30 FPS. Maybe down to like 24 FPS in the worst case scenario. I could probably play like that, but sub 20 FPS is a definite no from me. But, and that's a big but, this GPU is an RDNA 2 AMD GPU, which means that it has access to RSR, Radeon Super Resolution, which is AMD's upscaling tech that's integrated at a driver level. It's basically FSR, but you can apply it to any game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't have built-in FSR, but we can enable RSR, so let's do that now. And, well, yeah, yeah, we're way up. 
We're now getting 27 FPS with ray tracing enabled. And it's actually working really good. It feels just fine. Maybe a little on the stuttery side. As you can see by the frame time graph, or we're getting sub swings in the FPS, but honestly, it, it feels just fine. I totally play like this and have a great time. To be clear, I would not prefer to play at 27 FPS with ray tracing on, but I can play at almost 60 FPS with, with, without it. But if you want ray tracing in the shadow of the Tomb Raider at least, it's possible on this GPU. But as you know, one game isn't enough to give us an idea of the big picture, so let's give Quake 2 RTX a go. This is uh, basically a tech demo, giving good old Quake 2 RTX support to make it look all modern and fancy. I actually love this as a tech demo because it shows you how much of a difference ray tracing can make when used correctly. For a baseline at 1080p without ray tracing, we're getting like a crazy FPS. Over a thousand FPS. The game engine caps out at a thousand. I, th I think if you run Quake 2 at over a thousand FPS, it actually breaks the laws of space and time and could theoretically potentially create a new particle that will destroy the universe. So they capped it at 1000 FPS just to be on the safe side. So this is what it looks like with ray tracing off good old Quake 2, and with ray tracing on, it looks like this. And, well, we took a bit of a performance hit, huh? From 1000 FPS down to 30. But I actually think this is a good demonstration of how demanding ray tracing really is. Quake 2 requires basically no processing power to run. Heck, my MiU Mini can play Quake 2 at max FPS. But add some simple ray tracing in there and it just tanks the performance. But it really does look pretty cool like this. Kind of crazy how different an old game could look when you added like modern shaders or ray trace shadows or reflections or whatever. 30 FPS is uh, sort of playable, I guess. In, in FPS games, especially old school shooters like this, I, I'd way rather play with over 60 FPS, but hey, at least it's playable, right? Let's jump ahead to something more modern. Here's Far Cry 6, which came out last year in 2021. This game is on my backlog list. I finally got around to installing it. I, I've played it a bit and I'm, I'm kind of wondering why it took me so long to get around to playing it because I love the Far Cry series and this one looks really great and I think I'm gonna love it. Running at 1080p, medium settings, without ray tracing, we get about 55 FPS. So just like in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the RX 6400 can obviously play some really nice looking modern games at good frame rates, providing you're okay with 1080p and medium settings, which you should be, especially if you're only spending $160 on the GPU. Anyways, let's uh, turn on ray tracing, turn on those ray traced shadows and reflections and wow, that's freaking terrible. How do we go from 55 FPS down to 9? 9 freaking FPS. Single digits. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, just just don't. Don't even bother with ray tracing in Far Cry. The game looks amazing without it. Actually, to my eyes, it doesn't even look different at all. There's no reason to even attempt ray tracing with the RX 6400, even with FSR. Here we have performance FSR, and we're getting a not really playable 23 FPS. And it's not even a smooth 23 FPS. Look at that frame time graph. And the game looks like total garbage. I don't think anyone would actually prefer to play like this, but if you do, please go return your PC Gaming Master Race membership card and go buy an Xbox or something because you're not one of us. This one's for the kiddos. Minecraft has a ton of RTX branding all over it. They pushed it really hard about a year ago, and they're still releasing new RTX content for it. I think they had a partnership with Nvidia or something. Anyways, you can use ray tracing even on AMD GPUs, but it's not going to be a fun time. Here at 1080p, we're getting just 12 FPS, so not playable. And there really aren't any graphic options in the game you could change to increase the performance. You could reduce the render distance, but even here at some pretty low settings, we can't get that FPS up with ray tracing on. There is one trick you could do though. You can't adjust the resolution in-game since it's a Windows Store app, but you can change your desktop resolution. So I'm going to bump my desktop resolution right down to 720p, and that helps a lot. Now we get up to 20 FPS. Not that I think it, this is a good FPS, but it's kind of playable and it looks great. Minecraft with ray tracing is actually quite a sight to behold. They, they even do the subtle reflections in the shiny blocks and stuff. I think for someone who just wants to see what ray tracing looks like in Minecraft, or maybe to like take screenshots or something, they'll get a kick out of being able to do it on this cheap GPU. Or like a kid, they don't care about their FPS. I was watching my cousins play Minecraft on their crappy cheap tablets and they were getting like 15 FPS and they, they seem to be enjoying themselves, so eh, whatever. If you want to play Minecraft with ray tracing, you can do it with this GPU. Just do it at 720p, please. Okay, okay, uh, on to the main event, Cyberjunk 2077. 
And back to our primary goal, the most extreme ray tracing task in the most demanding game, and we'll see if we can make this GPU explode. Place your bets in the comments below. Maxed out settings with psycho ray tracing, but down at 720p with FSR 2.1 mod. Will it be playable? Enjoyable? I have my doubts, but let's give it a fair try. For baseline, when running at 1080p with medium settings and no ray tracing, we get an average of 42 FPS. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. This is the most unoptimized and demanding game known to mankind, so let's give credit where credit's due. We're running with settings that don't look terrible and it's actually playable. Alright, so let's turn on those ray traced shadows and reflections and... Yikes. Well, um... 8 FPS doesn't feel good or play well uh, at all, but at least it looks pretty good. Those ray traced reflections are pretty nice. So maybe for taking screenshots or something, you'd want to play like this, but obviously you would never actually want to play the game like this, right? So let's do our test. We need to install that FSR 2.1 mod. Easy enough, just download the mod, follow the instructions, copy it to the directory, run the config thing, crank up the ray tracing to Psycho, and whoa. Well, this I was not expecting, with maxed out settings like 18 FPS on average. I mean, it's not actually playable, but compared to 8 FPS, this feels buttery smooth. The shadows and reflections look pretty good, as far as I could tell, but 720p with ultra performance FSR is not looking great. It sort of looks like a badly compressed YouTube video at 240p. To be fair, the FSR 2.1 mod makes it look a lot better than it would at sub 720p resolution that's, it's, that it's running at. Maybe this FSR 2.1 mod would bring up our frame rate a lot without ray tracing though? I'm thinking like medium settings without ray tracing at like 900p with balanced FSR 2.1 might bring us up to like 55 or 60 FPS, but even 720p with ultra performance FSR isn't enough to save our FPS here. So, um... I guess there's your answer. Is it playable? Sorta. Is it enjoyable? No. But at least this GPU hasn't exploded yet. Uh, I'm not actually dead, guys, just so you know. I, I had to say it because I know there's going to be a few of you in the comments who are like, Whoa, Techweeb's dead? Now what dorky, somewhat insightful, and mildly entertaining content am I going to binge watch while I eat my cereal? So, uh, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I'm okay.